Hello everybody, it's Mike here at Gay From Scratch, and this one's going to be interesting. Okay, I gotta warn you up front, this is a breaking story, and I only know one side of it. I only know what Improbable is putting out there, and Unity have not yet released a statement. But, uh, this one has definitely got the game development world a titter, and let's just say, if this is true, uh, the number of people using game engines such as Godot, or, um, say, Zenko, or possibly Unreal Engine, it's about to go up, because a lot of people are not going to have a lot of trust in Unity. But, again, let me put forward a huge disclaimer that I've only heard from one side, I am not going to judge Unity until Unity releases a statement themselves, and this is a breaking story, and I'm going to show you just how breaking this is with some of the impact that we've got. But what exactly are we talking about here? Well, uh, Improbable makes a product called Spatial OS. Spatial OS is all basically about running your game engine in the server so you can scale it up to as many people as possible. Essentially, it is taking care of the network side of your game. And they've made clients for both uh, Unity and Unreal Engine. And Unity and Unreal have both mentioned Spatial OS in the past. And then today, uh, Improbable released this blog um, basically saying, due to a change in Unity's terms of service, Clause 2.4, which we will see in a second, all existing Spatial S games using Unity, including production games and in development games of all developers, are now in breach of Unity's license terms. Uh, in this blog post, we will explain our understanding of the serious development and how we are working to resolve it. So, and probable. Um, Today, we regretfully inform our community of the following developments. Unity Block, Spatial OS, the game engine provider, Unity recently changed in December 5th and then clarified to them in January the 9th their terms of service to specifically disallow services like Improbable slash Spatial OS um, to function with their engine. This was previously freely possible freely, keep that word in mind, possible in their terms as with other major engines. What this means, Unity has clarified to us that the change will effectively make it a breach of terms to operate or create spatial OS games using Unity, including in development and production games. Uh, they were having ongoing negotiation. Worryingly, this change occurred during an open commercial negotiation with the company to find a way to do, thing, to, to do more together. Revoked Unity license. In addition, Unity has revoked our ability to continue working with the engine for breaching the newly changed terms of service in an unspecified way. This will affect our ability to support games and continuing service for all other engines. Basically, Spatial OS says, hey, we still work fine with everybody that's not named Unity. So this is pretty dire. Basically, what it's saying is Unity's changed their structure or their license that the way that Improbable supported multiplayer Unity games is no longer allowed. And then they yanked their license so that the run times of their games that they were running no longer work. Now, I'm not 100% certain on this, but I believe the way that Spatial OS worked was by providing headless Linux servers of uh, Unity that ran in the cloud. So basically, a headless server is a version of the game engine that has no graphics. So this is a very common way of doing the server-side component in client-server networking. You're basically running a version of the game, but you're running a stripped-down version of the game that only has things like, you know, player tradition, uh, player um, locations, uh, physics calculations, that kind of stuff. All the other things, all the graphics and the rendering and that high... Um, GPU usage stuff has been removed from it, thus it's called headless. And I think this is what they ran and no longer are allowed to. So that was the first bit. Here we are now into the legalese. This is always fun to read. So I'm going to blitz through this as fast as possible. This is the newly updated as of December something. They just said fifth, I think it was. Uh, this is section 2.4, streaming and cloud restrictions. Again, I am not a lawyer, and this is so horrifically vague that any lawyer would probably look at it and go, that's not enforceable uh, because you can't make an overly broad statement. But let's go through it anyways. You may not directly or indirectly distribute the Unity software, including runtime portion of Unity software, the Unity runtime, or your project content if it, in, if it incorporates the Unity runtime by means of streaming or broadcasting so that any portion of the Unity software is primarily executed or simulated by the cloud or a remote server and transmitted over the internet or the network to end user devices without a separate license. Again, without a separate license, we'll get back to that in a second, uh, or authorization from Unity without limiting the foregoing uh, Without limiting the foregoing, you may not use a managed service running on cloud infrastructure, a managed service, or a specific integration of a binary add-on, uh, for example, a plugin or SDK or source code to be integrated in Unity service um, or your project content incorporating the Unity runtime and SDK integration to install or execute the Unity runtime on the cloud or a remote server unless use of a managed uh, service or SDK integration uh, has been specifically authorized by Unity. Additionally, you may not integrate the Unity runtime with a managed service 
or SDK integration, uh, integration and offer that integration to third parties for the purpose of installing or removing the Unity runtime on the cloud or remote server. For a list of Unity authorized streaming platforms, managed services, and SDK integrations, click here. This restriction does not prevent end users from remotely accessing um, your project content from an end user device that is running on another end user device. You may not use a third party to directly or indirectly distribute or make available stream broadcast any portion of the Unity software unless that third party is authorized by Unity to provide such a service. So that last line is BS. There's no way that is possible. That doesn't even involve the runtime. That's basically just saying you may not use a third party to uh, stream any portion of Unity software. That, uh, that that's iffy because that basically bans Twitch unless Twitch got approval. But what the big part is, the majority of this top part is the runtime. Now, if you're not a Unity developer, the runtime is kind of um, oh, it's kind of hard to explain. It, it, it is essentially the, the the reusable common components of the engine that run on each individual platform. So every different platform has its own version of the runtime. So when I say the headless server, well, effectively that is still the Unity runtime. So what they've done is they've changed their licensing so that runtime cannot be run in the cloud. And that means anyone that is a cloud provider cannot run Unity in the cloud without negotiating a license. And that seems to be where the big things have changed. Without a separate license, without a separate license, this comes up a couple times over and over and over again. Um, so basically what they're saying is if you want to run uh, server based cloud versions of the Unity server, you need to get specific approval now on from Unity. Now it seems like previously Spatial OS had this approval and now they don't. And it was yanked on the fly. And that is terrifying because that means everybody that developed on Spatial OS is now officially and utterly screwed. Huh. So what I did find interesting there um, during an open commercial negotiation, so they were talking about how to license the product and then this fell apart. And then they also said, uh, I pointed out earlier, uh, was freely possible in their terms as with other major engines. So that is the, I think the crux of the situation is, I, I, and I'm, I'm reading 100% between the lines here. I have no further data to go from, but between what Improbable is saying and the way that their uh, EULA is licensed, it sounds like Unity starting to try and charge for this. And Spatial is basically saying, kiss my ass. Now it's interesting on this one though, is one of the developers you've probably heard of is Split Milk Studio. They um, kind of came out this morning with, uh, a tweet, hi, we've got some really bad news. Due to a dispute between Improbable and Unity, we have shut down the Lazarus servers. It's going to be down for an indeterminate amount of time, basically until the dispute is dissolved one way or another. So realistically, games are being impacted by this. Kinda. Now, once again, why I started the very beginning of this video off with a bit of a disclaimer, this is a very evolving situation and we haven't heard from Unity yet. And there is this. We're not sure quite what's going on. We were told that access to the servers would be revoked by 2.30 p.m. today, but it seems that's not the case. Until either the servers are forced out or we are told to turn them off, we will keep Lazarus live. So either there's a reprieve, this isn't as dire as it is made out to be, or there is a negotiation still ongoing. But you can see this, this is the impact. If you developed using Spatial OS and you know Unity changed their terms of service in such a way that Spatial OS is no longer a viable product, everything built with Spatial OS is no longer a viable product. Now you can sit back and go, okay, well, why would Unity do this all of a sudden? And I can't think of any possible reason other than Oh, maybe this one. Um, they recently renounced open matchmaking, and this is basically a, a service for providing the same kind of thing that um, Spatial OS does. Uh, so it's just Unity is gonna start doing their own thing. Now this one is open source to start with, but they also announced their partnership with Unity a few months before that. And here you see creating together Unity and the Google Cloud, which is kind of ironic because the Google Cloud is also what Spatial OS uses. But if you scroll down to the bottom of this one, a bit of a description of what Unity's future of networking is all about, uh, you will see they are actually offering Oh, shucks, this isn't the post that said it, but basically they said they're going to be operating um, cloud-based services on top of this release. So this is definitely an area that Unity has been moving into. They've created an alliance with Google. They are moving into the cloud services space themselves, and they are also talking about offering their own uh, cloud-based networking subscription service, so basically paid cloud hosting that they provide. 
And that sounds a whole lot like basically they're moving into the same space as Spatial OS, so they changed their terms of service to kill a, um, a previous partner, now competitor. So, yeah, it's, it's early. There's a lot more to come out on this one, but I, I figured I'd get the news out to you as it's breaking. Uh, if you are currently a Spatial OS user, gulp. Um, unless you're using you know, Unreal Engine or an open source engine, then you're completely fine. Uh, and if, if Unity don't come out and nip this in the butt, they just gave every single open source engine a huge amount of ammunition about why going with a closed source engine that can change their terms of service at any time and completely screw all of their developers is a bad thing. That, that's, that's not the message that Unity wants to get out there. And that is exactly the message they're sending out there with this one right now. Again, the message is only coming from one side right now. It's only improbable we are hearing from, but Unity has to get out there and Unity has to make a statement. Unless of course this is true and, and they're actually literally shutting down previously allowed services because they are now competing with them and screwing all the game developers that went with those services, in which case, that's a big black eye for Unity. So it's going to be interesting to see how this one turns out. But let's just say that the closed source folk and um, and even Unreal Engine, who continues to have um, Spatial OS support, uh, they, they just got a lot of uh, arguing points out of this one. And hopefully the developers out there that are currently using Spatial OS and Unity aren't going to be completely screwed at the end of the day. Because if you were late in the life cycle or worse, like uh, Spilt Milk, you'd already published your game and then your networking component was just borked because of a terms of service change at Unity. Yeah, that is not good. Anyways, let me know what you think in the comments down below. I'm sure they're going to be lively today. And again, I want to please throw that disclaimer in just one more time before we jump to a thousand conclusions. We have not heard both sides of the story yet. And until you hear that, the whole narrative of Unity is evil, it's easy to fall into, but let's give them a little bit of the benefit of the doubt here. And you know, not all of it. And you know, if they do come out and say, yeah, yeah, this is true. You, we can really get the unity is evil memes going, but let's give them a bit of the benefit of the doubt. Let them respond to this. Cause th this, this seems too stupid to be true, but let me know what you think comments down below. And I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.